good to be here. Yes, sir. Come on now, y'all know y'all can say it louder than that. Look yes, at your neighbor that you like tonight and say, neighbor, it's just good to be here. Come on, y'all, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Y'all give all of our young people tonight a hand clap of praise. Amen. Giving honor to God, who's the head of all of our lives, and to all of you tonight, it's just good to be here. No matter what you may be going through right now, God is still good. I don't care what it looks like on paper, God is still good. I need somebody to touch somebody with me tonight. I know this is youth revival, but everybody ought to be able to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Anybody happy to be here tonight? Just raise your hand. Come on. Are you glad to be here tonight? I don't know about nobody else preachers and, and men of God and, and, and people all over the place, all of God's children. I'm just glad to be here. First, give honor to God who's the head of all of our lives. To all of you tonight, to my ecclesiastical brothers, to the saints and the ain'ts. Yes, uh, give me just call folks come to church, don't make them say. Yes, Is that right? Yes, and y'all do know only 10% of the folks in here, there's 10% of the folks in here need Jesus. Yes, Dr. Sims, where you get that number from? I see how many seniors we got. We got about, what, five seniors? And I know y'all have had some math somewhere. Yes. Now, I, I took a lot of math because I'm an engineer by trade, by vocation, and so we liked a lot of math and science. And so my elder brother, Jesus, handpicked 12 men. All right. All right. But one of these men was a devil. Uh, right. So if you divide one by 12, mm. you're going to get about 10%. Amen. So 10% of the folks at Prosperity need Jesus. Now the other 90% of us We say Now while I'm preaching this week If you don't say something You're going to come up here to the moments bitch Amen Because you, if you are saying tonight You ought to be able to testify To something that's being said Is that right I don't know about y'all but I'm so hyped to be here tonight I could not wait to get here tonight To talk to not only the young people But to talk to all of us this youth week. Yes, sir. Tonight, praise God, what is our theme tonight? What is our theme tonight? God deserves youthful praise. Yes, sir. Do y'all not realize that God loves praise? Yes, Psalm 150 says, let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Right. Now this right. week, y'all homework assignment, everybody ought to have a notebook and a pen to take notes. Every sermon will be on video, so if you want to get a video, just have to holler at me later. Amen? Amen. But you ought to have a notebook and a pen, so when somebody asks you what the real say, you say, hold on, let me check my notes, okay? Because you ought to be able to say something that the preacher said. Amen? Amen? You ought to be able to say something. You ought to get something from the Word of God. Amen? Amen. God deserves praise. Do y'all know God is a what? Jealous God. Amen. God does not play second fiddle. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. I don't know how many men will share their wives. I don't know how many wives will share their husband. Amen. Amen. Y'all might have quiet on pastor. Amen. So if we won't share each other, some of us won't even share a happy meal. All right. <laughs> so if we won't share anything or anybody. God is a jealous God. Yes. Am I right about it? Yes, sir. What got the nation of Israel in so much trouble in the Bible? They went a whoring after other gods. Right. They loved other gods besides the God. That's the word. Is God. that right? So tonight, I wanted to preach tonight. Oh my goodness. This sermon, this message I was sharing with Reverend Pierce in the study, we've heard this message a thousand times. But I have not heard it the way God is allowing me to present it to you tonight. All right. Over in Daniel, we know Daniel from Daniel when he was an old man. He spent a night in the Lion Motel. 
he laid, Bishop Fountain, he laid on the backside of some lions. And God took the appetite from him until the morning when the men that accused him were thrown down in that pit with their family and the lions ate him up. Yes. We all know about Daniel and the lions. Then we also know about Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro. <laughs> A bit nigga, excuse me. They like that Negro, what is But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, three young men that really captivated my mind these last couple of weeks that I was studying, getting ready for tonight. Over in Daniel, the third chapter, verse 16 and 17. And when you get some time, I want you to read the entire chapter when you get some time. Before this particular chapter, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And his dream, God dropped in his spirit, emailed him the blueprint for the kingdoms that were going to follow the Babylonian Empire. All right. You had the Mede, Persian, the Roman Empire were going to succeed Nebuchadnezzar's empire. All right. But he got it all miscombobulated after Daniel interpreted his dream. And Daniel told him the dream and this statue that was built. And he went and built a statue 90 feet tall out of gold and wanted everybody, when they played the music at a dedication service, he wanted everybody to drop it like it was hot. Yes. Amen. He wanted everybody to do the ducky when they played the music. Amen. And so there were three young men that refused to bow down. Over in Daniel, the third chapter, 16 and 17, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us. Yes. Say he will. He will. From your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Right. A subject that I want to use for just a moment of your time, don't let your condition Dictate your position. All right, all right, all right. Because what arrested me about this scripture, y'all, is that these young men are probably 17 or 18 years old right now, and somebody had to teach them about God. Yes. So even though this is a youth revival, somebody had to teach those children how to sing the song they just sang. Mamas and daddies, we are charged tonight before God. We need to be training our children in the ways of God. Right. What are we going to talk about tonight? Don't let your condition dictate your position. It is a call for spiritual integrity. Oh, yeah. We must teach our children if they don't stand for something, they'll fall for anything. Right. We're living in a day and time. Our kids, our children need to be committed more now than they ever have been in their lives. Yeah. Our children are bombarded with all kind of stuff now we never thought of at 15 and 16 years old. They got Facebook, they got the internet, they got Twitter, they got iPads and iPods and cell phones. Some of their cell phones better than our cell phones. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody. There's nothing wrong with that. But our children are exposed to so much. There's got to be a mom and a daddy somewhere telling them about God. Come on, somebody. The thing today is a call for the people of God to stand for the Lord. Lord, despite the circumstances. Yes, the role of the parents, parents don't miss this, the role of the parents in molding our children, the Bible instructs mama and daddy train up a child in the way he should go, that when he's old he won't depart. Yes, Moms and dad ought to be teaching their children how to love God. Yes. Train our children to have a spirit of integrity. Stand for God. Y'all repeat out of me, say stand for God. Stand for God. Prepare our children for peer pressure. I'll tell you something right now. Peer pressure don't stop just because you turn 18. Because right. some adults right now are living their life because somebody else wants them to do something. Right. Uh -huh. You ought not to go out and get in debt and buy a 20, a 2011 car just because your friends say so. Right. Uh, who got to pay the note to Toyota every 30 days? Right. Hey, amen, silly. Hey, amen, silly. It's too many of us black folks living our lives based on other folks' opinion. You ought to take your neighbor right now. The devil is alive. I'm not living to make you happy. Yeah. 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 
know somebody. You cut your, you cut all your hair out because your friends say you ought to have your hair. Now you got your hair. Now you went out and buying other folks' hair because your friends say now you need a weed. Amen, sir. Tell your neighbor, I'm not living for you. You got to understand, God made you number one. Everybody put up number one. I'm ready to preach up in here. It ain't nothing, it ain't nothing, it ain't nobody other than you. Even though they're twins and they're twin little girls, they're still different. Am I right? You're still different. It's, no, it's two people in here. No two people have the same set of fingerprints. Hold your hand up. Throw your hand up. All the single ladies. Throw your hand up. <laughs> You look at your fingertip. There's no other person with your set of fingerprints. You an individual. You ought to live your life like God had designed for you to live. Come on, somebody. The enemy, the next thing we'll talk about, not only the role of the parents in molding our children, but the enemy is jealous of our position. The devil hates the fact that we are close to God. In the Garden of Eden, he came down and separated Adam and Eve from God. There's nobody else. Y'all hear this and hear this way. There's ain't nobody. Big mama said there's nobody gonna do you like Jesus. He said it in the study. Ain't nobody, excuse my English, ain't nobody gonna do you like Jesus. I feel like shouting right now, but I want to get to your message. The last thought I gotta leave with you is God is able to deliver. If we declare, he will deliver. Because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, I don't know God. Bishop, this thing blew me away. He said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, our God is able to deliver even if he does. He is still God. Can I tell y'all something? This is not in my notebook. but let me tell you something. Some of y'all going through something right now, and you won't praise God. In Joshua chapter 6, before they took Jericho, God told Joshua, you already got the city. So you ought to shout now, because the victory is already yours. Come on, somebody. I feel like shouting up in here. We walk around too sad. We ought to get glad, because God has already worked it out. So why are you trying to figure it out? God has already worked it out. Hallelujah, somebody. Our parent, parents, I hope y'all taking those out. Y'all looking at me like, I thought this was supposed to be youth revival. It is. But our young people, we cannot fault them if mom and daddy ain't right. Hello? We cannot blame our children if mom and daddy ain't got their stuff together. Amen. Amen. Mamas and daddies need to get their act together. How did these young men, this blew me away. How did these young men, how were they able to stand flat-footed in front of a whole nation, in front of a king, and flat-footed told him, we are not going to bow down. Yes, Where does this kind of spiritual integrity come from? Somebody had to teach it to him. Yes. Mom and dad, it's a large responsibility yes. being a parent. Yes. Our society that they try to downplay the role of mom and daddy, but mom and daddy is somebody. Amen. You are, if you got a living mom and daddy right now, when you get home, time you get home, you ought to hug their neck, kiss them on the jaw, and say, I just love you. Uh-huh. They're going to look at you funny. I'm like, what do you want? I don't want nothing. Uh-huh. But Pastor Sam told me tonight to come home and hug your neck. And thank you, I got cable TV. Thank you, I got food in the refrigerator. Thank you, I got an iPhone. Thank you, I got Michael Jordan tennis shoes. Thank you, I look good every day I go to school. Thank you, I'm about to go to the college of my choice. The, the, the worst thing in the world to me is an ungrateful child. Don't get me started up in here. All you got to do is be obedient. When I tell you to take the trash out,